one there. Good girls. So, first things first, let's make a brew. So hi, I'll introduce myself to start. I'm Jordan from Glory Jensen Tents. Um, bit of an outdoor enthusiast. If you've watched any of my camping videos before, it's just a lot about camping, bushcraft, uh, hiking, multi-day hikes, um, dogs, <laughs> anything to do with the outdoors, I absolutely love it. So um, this brings me back to why I'm making this video in the first place. So, if I haven't said already, this video is going to be about what to do if your dog is attacked by a snake, a venomous snake to be exact, um, an adder, and you might think, Jordan, why are you qualified to tell anyone around about this? Um, it actually happened to me uh, a couple of years ago. Um, so, Coda, the, the Vizsla that I've got, uh, the Vizsla Cross, um, went, it was during lockdown, me and my girlfriend Megan decided to, it was on my birthday, so we decided to go somewhere because it was locked on, you couldn't go anywhere, so we decided to venture out. So we decided to go up to Kielder. It's a local woodland about 45 minutes away. Um, beautiful if anybody hasn't been there. As we went on this walk, seen a lot of wildlife, um, decided to nip off and bring a picnic so we decided to nip off and we've just seen this beautiful bit as we're walking along the path this beautiful bit that had the sun glaring on it right next to the lake um, it was a little bit of a trek to get down there but I thought we're not really gonna get bothered by anyone so we went down had some beers um, had a picnic it was lovely um, as we're packing up Coda jumped you know because Coda was just lying behind us so she jumped and I thought what the hell was that and luckily I seen that there was an adder sit, sat right next to her, curled up, as if it was ready to pounce again. And basically I thought I would make this video just to show what we did, what we learned, what we did right, um, and just to pass on a little bit of knowledge um, that we acquired that fateful day. Um, but as you can see, I mean, not right now, but she's behind the camera. She is absolutely fine now, she survived. The worst bit about it was, thanks Sibby, the worst bit about it was it was seven kilometers away from the car, so I had to carry her um, all the way to the car because I've got her right on the end of the nose. Um, yeah, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to go through a few pointers of what to do if your dog is attacked by an adder. So here we go. So, rule number one recognize what has happened. Um, some key signs from what we discovered was if you didn't see it happen um, some signs that happened were she went really like lethargic she was tired she was, had her head down her tail was down she was slowly walking and then it was a bit like right something's up here um, recognizing the animal so if you do see the snake and you think that's just bitter is this an adder so I'm going to put a picture of an adder up right now. So as you can see by the picture, it's got like diamond, black diamond pattern on its back, uh, going all the way down its spine. They're normally like a grey or a brown, depending on the year, uh, time of year and the age of the snake. Um, but yeah, it's that black spine that you should be looking out for. Um, they are the only poisonous snakes in England or the UK for that matter. Um, there's three, I think, that are native, three types of snake that are native to, to the British Isles, which is the adder, the brown snake, and the grass snake. So 
recognizing which one is the adder is very important um because any other one wouldn't really bother your dog it probably just hurt it more than anything it probably just got a shock off the bite but an adder is when you really need to kick yourself into gear so that brings me on to my next point number two is keep calm um you panicking and freaking out is only going to make your dog panic and freak out so do everyone a favor and just chill only rational decisions are made when you're calm when you're panicking you make the wrong decisions you make the wrong moves and this can, can be a fatal fatal thing so then that brings me on to point number three do not suck out the venom it is a myth um, it doesn't work it's like an old cowboy trick you see in the films it is a myth I was assured by the vets it is a myth so do not try and suck out the venom all you're gonna do really is potentially put the venom into you which <laughs> isn't gonna be any better anyway if it's in your digestive system so don't do that number four try and tie off the point of where it's been bit obviously if it's been bit in the face you can't do that like in my situation she was bit on the nose obviously that can't be done what will happen is it'll start to swell up um, again don't panic that is normal it will happen so if it's a leg a leg or a tail basically try and if you've got any sort of cordage a charger um, and a bit of paracord a rope that you see lying around then a strand off a off a branch try and tie the leg off just to stop that um, blood from circulating it'll stop the venom from spreading um, and you might just save your dog's life doing that right so that brings me on to number five same as with tying the leg off you're trying to stop that venom from circulating um, so if you're moving or making the dog move um, it will spread the venom faster so luckily I watch a lot of silly TV that wasn't so silly on the day and um, so I knew this so I knew that not to make her move the best thing that you can do is carry them obviously people aren't able to carry their massive dogs which at the same time is a little bit of a reason why I say if you are not capable of carrying your dog then you shouldn't get it um, hopefully this video might make someone think twice about it actually um, but what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna show you a technique that I used for carrying Coda because she is a very big dog um, and she's heavy I made the mistake of trying to pick her up by a bum and her chest and carrying her like that um, as soon as I picked her up like that I knew that I couldn't um, continue doing it so what I had to do was think on my feet and luckily I, in my mind I went back to some hunting programs that I've seen uh, when they're carrying deer they kind of carry them with so what you want to do is and I'll, I'll put a little tutorial up right now what you want to do is you want to grab the back legs together the front legs together get underneath the dog keep your back straight and stand up and what this does is it makes the dog comfortable it's comfortable to carry it's like carrying a backpack it's just putting all that weight on your shoulders it's not putting it on your lower back it's not putting it on your arms it's just taking all that strain out yes like in my situation I was seven kilometers away from the car so I had to carry the dog that far like this but if I didn't do that I wouldn't have been able to do it and um, so luckily I thought quickly in this situation but this is kind of why I'm making the, the video because someone might not think to do it that way and it takes a lot longer you've got more chance of the venom spreading um, and it's just it could have been done better so this is why I'm sharing this information so that if you are ever in a situation you've got a big dog this is how you should carry them um, again some dogs some dogs don't like being picked up and I get that so if you can obviously 
try and get the transportation to you. So whether that be someone's got a truck and if you're able to drive down the track, do that if it's safe. Um, if you're on a road, maybe someone keep the dog calm and someone go and um, get the car and bring it to you. That will obviously be better. But if you are in the situation where you've got to carry the dog over some sort of distance, this is the way that you should do it. At that, I'm getting parched. The next point I'm gonna say is, once you've got it in the car, on your way to the vet, um, it's time to start cleaning the wound. So you wanna get as much stuff out of there as possible. Um, Anti-back wipes, um, anything you've got lying around um, that is sterile. So obviously getting that nice and clean as soon as possible, maybe it's even before you start lifting the dog, get it cleaned if you can. If not, get the dog to the car. You've got some wipes in, the, in your door card, get them out, give it a wipe, give it a clean. It will help. Um, the next point is get it to the vets as soon as possible. So yeah, unfortunately for us, um, the closest vets was Bellingham and it was closed. So apart from there, it was a 45 minute drive to Hexham, which was, I mean, lucky for us, that was where we were going anyway, but it, we knew it was quite a drive. And after carrying here for that distance on my back, um, I was knackered and then I had to drive 45 minutes, like a bat out of hell, which I do regret because I was going far too fast. Um, I was treating it as if it was a complete emergency situation i was panicking myself so i was driving quite fast so again that is one thing that i did wrong your dog's not going to thank you if you crash your car and kill yourself so stay calm drive safely um i learned from that mistake that i did because i did uh, <laughs> yeah i did kind of panic and start driving like a bat out of hell because uh, the way that Coda was, because it was on a nose, it was closer to all of the places where you don't really want the venom to spread to. So she was starting to droop down. She was kind of like looking like she was falling asleep. Her face had puffed right up. So there was a little bit of panic came across me. So if I was going to give you a bit of advice on that, don't panic. Drive safely. They're not going to thank you if you crash and kill yourself or injure yourself or injure others so drive safely so what will happen is you'll take her to the vets him to the vets you to the vets if it's you that gets bit um, and they will basically say that they need the anti-venom so what they will do is they'll give them little tests because it really puts strain on their livers so they give them little a little test first like a micro dose of it to see if the liver reacts to it um, obviously in that situation I was panicking and I was saying I don't really care if it affects her liver she's gonna die anyway so just give her it um, panicking regret doing it they know what they're doing they're the professionals trust that the vet knows what they're doing um, I went charging in carrying the dog like a bat out of hell charge through the door put her on the bench and then they were like, can you go wait outside? It's COVID, you're not allowed in here. And I was like, for God's sake. So I started kicking off of the, the vets. They've done a fantastic job. Scott Mitchell and Hexham, I'll big them up. Absolutely fantastic job. Can't thank them enough. They were brilliant. Um, a funny little thing that, that, that happened when I got her back is she had like patches shaved out of her all the way down there. And I said, uh, what, what's the patches for? Like, is that where you've been ejecting her? And they said, no, that's how we track the venom. Because um, her uh, skin was going black where the venom was going down. Um, which is crazy to think about it. Um, but yeah, she was okay in the end. It didn't reach her uh, vital organs, so she was absolutely fine. She made a full recovery, as you can see. Still in the outdoors, still loving it. Still not cautious. <laughs> it still goes everywhere. Looking for everything, wanting to hunt every single creature that ever lived. Don't you kid? So yeah. Um,
trust the vets. They know what they're doing. They're professionals. So going on to the next um, section of this, and it's basically spotting where adders, where to find adders and where to avoid. Um, so we didn't know this at the time, um, but adders try and stay, they're very shy creatures, they try and stay away from you. So if you do see an adder, it's most likely um, they're not trying to find you, you found it. Um, normally when they notice that you're there, they'll either retreat or try and hide. So, very shy creatures, very timid. Obviously, if they feel threatened, then they're gonna go into attack mode, into a, uh, onto the defense. So that's obviously what happened here. It just stumbled across Coda. She was lying down. She's went to get up to see what it is, probably put her nose towards it, and it's been her. So, places to stay away from. Adders live in long grass, normally near a water source. So basically, if you are near a water source, near a river, a stream, a lake. Try and stay away from the long grass. That's where they're gonna be nested. That's where they're gonna be hunting. You just stay away from there. Nice short grass, stick to the path, and everything will be fine. You'll probably never even see one. Um, the more people I've spoke to, have, they always say, like my dad's 62, and he says he's seen one adder in his life. Since the adder that bit Coda, I've seen two more up in uh, the Cheviots, so it seems to be Cheviots Kielder um, sort of national park seems to be around there where there is a lot of them because obviously there is a lot of water um, it's good hunting ground for them it, good breeding ground it's just perfect for them so if you are anywhere nice and secluded where there's a water source stay away from the long grass just stay away from it it's not worth it you might think oh well, let's get off a beaten track and have a picnic and oh yeah we're so so outdoorsy let's do this no you will regret it you will regret it um it's just not worth it stick to the path people so another thing that you can do which uh, i haven't mentioned is downloading maps on your phone when it's somewhere where you don't know um i hadn't been on this trail in kielder so luckily uh, i'm a hiking nerd and i downloaded the map if we hadn't have done that it was longer to go back the way where we came i think that was about 8k back and the, there was a shorter path straight. Basically, it went like a little bit windy and on the straight, uh, straight to the car. So we didn't know that. So luckily, I had the map there. So I picked Coda up, gave Megan the map. She was giving me directions whilst I was just jogging back with Coda on my back. Um, yeah, so download a map, I think, is the main one of the main points. So for those that don't know, if you go into your app store, you can basically just download a, a, any hiking app. They're all pretty much the same. I personally use all trails, but they are all very similar. So if you go into all trails, look for the uh, map that you want, for the, the route that you want to take, and you can basically just download them by clicking the little icon there, doing it in all trails, and basically means that you can now use that map when you don't have any data. Um, when you're offline, you can still use it and that's crucial. Sibby, <laughs> what are you doing, darling? What are you doing there? Eh? So yeah, um, down, uh, download maps for where, when you're going on trails that you don't know. It, um, it does just give you that little bit of a safety net. So if you do get lost, if you, um, if you do need to know a quicker way back, like in this circumstance, it just gives you that little bit of comfort knowing that you know exactly where you are, you know exactly where you need to go. Um, so in an emergency, you can get there really quickly. So, yeah. So yeah, that's it from me. Um, once again, I don't claim to be a professional in this. Um, it's all just from personal experience that this happened. Luckily, I half knew what I was doing in the situation, whereas if I didn't, I maybe would have made some bad calls. Um, so that's the whole reason why I'm making this video is so maybe it just reaches a few people and it makes them think about it because it was a it was a terrible situation. She was in in the vets for a couple of days. The bill was over a grand. Like it, it wasn't a good situation. I would have paid anything at this point, by the way. The, the money wasn't important, but just so you have a rough guide, it was about a thousand pounds. She was in there a couple of days. The the treatments that they had to give her, the anti venom. Uh, it's all stuff that 
cost money and like a silly oaf that I am, I didn't have insurance, so I just had to pay the cash up front. Again, don't mind it because I would pay anything for that dog, she's just me little sidekick. Um, obviously this little, a little sister now is part of the family, so. <laughs> Absolute lunatics, but hopefully the information I've just gave you can save your little lunatic. So, thanks for watching. Like and subscribe. Um, share this around as much as possible because I want as many people as possible to, to know this information. Um, it's only I've only done all this so that you can share it. Um, hopefully, it helps. Um, yeah. Thank you for watching. I'll see you on the next one.